Hello and welcome to Jamaica Magazine. I'm Theodore Henry, so glad you could join us. Coming up, we look at the ways we can mitigate disasters, plus see some of our youth displaying engineering ingenuity. Sit back and relax with us for these and more in the half-hour journey through the pages of Jamaica Magazine. Jamaica Eye is part of an island-wide network of camera surveillance systems designed to increase the safety of you, our citizens. If you have a camera system outside your home or office facing a public space, join us in helping to make Jamaica a safer place for all. Log on to jamaicaeye.gov.jm today. Jamaica Eye, we're all connected. The Ministry of National Security, creating a safer and prosperous Jamaica. Disasters do happen so we must be prepared. Through public awareness and training, the Jamaica Fire Brigade's Fire Wardens Club in Schools is preparing children to be ready for disasters such as fires. Take a look. Move to right in threes. Right turn. Move to left in threes. Squad will retire. Left turn. Ebow time. This is not training for the cadet corps. There is a new co-curricular club in schools, the Fire Wardens Club. The Jamaica Fire Brigade has embarked on a new initiative. It involves children and is being implemented in schools across the country. The initiative is similar to that of many other school-based co-curricular programs. The only difference? This club reinforces the importance of disaster preparedness, management and restoration. The main aim is to reduce the country's susceptibility to significant damage from natural and man-made disasters. Ready? Down. Up. What to do if you close our fire? The program is now being implemented in schools across the country since its inception at institutions in St. Catherine in 2017. Things falling, yes, and you are frightened too. When I showed you the video, yeah. did you see where the road split? Yes. And you saw cars going down into the between the Yes. We initially started with a quiz competition that went on to the primary schools. So we realized that we needed something a little more tangible where we can actually have the fire waters club in the schools. The motto of the club is preparing today for disasters tomorrow. We are preparing these students so that whenever there's a disaster, they will be ready to help within the schools, home and churches. So we would teach them to be ready when there's an earthquake so they would know the, 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 the procedure, they would know the drill. We prepare them to help their schoolmates if somebody got injured and need to be moved from one place to the other. If there's a fire, we also taught them about the bucket brigade, they can get some water. You might have known that there are times when children are trapped children are also burnt in fires. Now, if these children were taught and have some idea of what to do, the possibility that they could have helped themselves. Within the schools, a teacher is assigned to the club and for that purpose is given the title of a superintendent. Our students are very enthusiastic about the club and they get involved in many different activities as it pertains to knowing and disseminating information about disasters and disaster mitigation. One of the best agents for information are children and parents respond to children. So when the children know certain things about how to manage disasters, what are some of the right things to do, they can help to inform their parents and in turn the parents will inform the community members to respond. And in a community like Portmore, where there are so many potential disasters waiting to happen, it is important that Greater Portmore and the schools in Greater Portmore know about Firewatch and become involved in it. 
Fire Wardens Clubites are also engaged in humanitarian activities, visiting children's and nursing homes. I just love how they do things. You have to do them proper, and if you don't do them proper, sometimes you get kicked out of the club. The Fire Wardens Club is very fun, and I get to do drills, like fire safety, earthquake, tsunamis, and fire drill, because it helps us to blow out fires. The Fire Warden Club teaches us to do a drill, teach us when you're to do, to what to do when your clothes is on fire. Stop, drop, cover your face and roof. It's a great club to join and I love it because you have fun and it's helping your community and schools to, to raise disaster awareness. If someone's house is being flooded out, I can help them by doing check, take them out of the house and take out the good stuff like the birth, like the birth papers and the passports. Loss of life and property as a result of natural and man-made disasters should be minimized as the Fire Wardens Club expands and more children get involved. Technology is being used not just to improve efficiency in how we go about our daily activities, but it's increasingly playing a role in maintaining public safety. In our next feature, we learn how technology can be used to predict the eventualities and impact of disasters and to determine safeguards. Here's more. <laughs> Floods and earthquakes are two of the most common natural disasters. But unlike earthquakes, which usually take us by surprise, flooding to some extent can be predicted. But when it is, what should we do with the information? And how do we safeguard ourselves and properties against this eventuality? Through the use of revolutionary technology, Awareness of the possible outcomes of a natural disaster has become more advanced. Persons are now able to use data on location, roof and house type to create a simulation of what may happen in an earthquake, tropical storm or hurricane. Well, the simulation was designed to combine place, type of structure and event because it's, Jamaica is vulnerable to four events, four types of events, hurricanes slash tropical storms, um, landslides, floods, and earthquakes. But the same building that you live in is exposed to all four. And that same building you live in will react differently to all four. Jamaica's landscape equally sits in low-lying and coastal areas as on hills and valleys. The country is also in an earthquake zone so it can't hurt to do a little research on all the what-ifs, right? You'll be able to go inside your house and see your roof being blown off or your slab roof staying on. You'll be inside your slab roof house when earthquake shakes it comes down on you. We'll be able to have those type of simulations. How about the possible outcome of a Category 5 hurricane if you're living in a zinc roof wooden house that is built on stilts in a river valley? So now that these predictions are available to us, just how useful are they? This simulator is now designed to take all of that information, the conventional knowledge that we as academics know, or the disaster management professional knows, dump it online as we have. Let the developer, housing developer, have access to it and see for himself. Let the parish council person or the development approval authority play with it. And once they've viewed it, the authorities can use the data to plan areas for development, 
approve or deny development applications and build better. The simulator is not just a special effect disaster interactive tool, but one that takes into account the realities of environmental and living conditions here in Jamaica. And the simulator also seeks to bring an awareness of the impact natural disasters may have on lives, properties and businesses in relation to the country's national goals. The effect a hazard would have on everything ranging from the individual to the nation is important and scaremongering only goes so far. The simulator allows you to either scare yourself or reassure yourself, but it's based on reality. Another useful element to this drill is the data it uses. Historical data are planted and come to life through the simulator to facilitate emergency responses as well as forward planning in action. Knowing where hazards are and knowing where they are not is extremely valuable information to, business, to businesses such as insurance. Instead of blanketing Portland, as a hazard prone parish, we can know which parts of Portland are hazard prone, therefore allowing people in Portland who are not in hazard prone areas to get lower insurance premiums. You, you underwrite them differently um, and you also underwrite more accurately and properly the people who are in hazard prone zones. So. If you have already bought your dream home or are thinking of buying or building, you may want to try a few simulation exercises to test the stability of your home or to find out if where you intend to build is the best place to put down roots. We continue our look at technology. The Herbert Morrison Technical High School's Engineering Club has some interesting displays showcasing engineering technology applications. All right, Anna Hugh, would you like to demonstrate how rains along a ridge? Excellent job, Anna Hugh. This is the augmented reality sandbox created by the engineering club at the Herbert Mercy Technical High School. This is one of the five projects that will be shown in today's episode of School Zone. Stay tuned after the break for more. School Zone, School Zone, School Zone, School Zone, School Zone, School Zone. School zone, school zone, school zone. Another episode of School Zone. As you heard earlier, we're here at the Herbert Morrison Technical High School in St. James, where we're learning about a few projects by the Engineering Club. Uh, first up on the program is the AR Sandbox. And joining me is the geography teacher here, Mrs. King Hope, who will be telling us more about this. The AR Sandbox is actually a technological tool that casts or projects virtual reality onto sand. So it is actually a simulation of topographical features that you can actually manipulate as you move the sand. It is one of the most student-centered tools we have at Herbert Morrison. Students can actually interact and move the sand and at the same time they can learn and have fun. Before we get to the actual secret of how it operates, there are some things that I would like to show you in terms of how the tool is used. We usually have flat maps that we use, we call them ordnance survey maps. Those maps are two-dimensional and students have limitations where those maps are concerned. Where the AR sandbox is concerned, students can actually interact with the box and create the features that they would normally see on a two-dimensional map. That excites them and that also enhances and complements the um, geography as a learning tool. Really, it's, it's really simple. It's only three main pieces of equipment. An infrared camera that we call the eyes, a projector and a computer that compiles the information. So the camera judges the depth which sends that information back to the computer. The computer processes this and sends it back to the projector which 
shows you what you see here. And seeing as we use the computer, we can put different functions on. So different keys have different functions. For instance, the one key would introduce more liquid to the environment, while the six key would change the type of liquid. So we can change it from water to lava to green moss to snow back to water. So Ms. Clark, here we have the Herbie go-kart. It was a project that was started a couple of years back by other students of the engineering club, but wasn't finished because of financial strains that they had. So I and others finished the go-kart as best as possible, as you can see here. We have here the gas pedal, which accelerates the vehicle, the kart, when we apply pressure on the pedal. Then we have the brake pedal, which is used to apply friction to the wheels, which slows down the cart. Then we have the steering, which steers either left or right. Now around here, we have the engine. This is a Honda GX120 6.5 horsepower engine. And this cart is a dead axle go kart, which means that it is run by only one wheel. Over here, we have the remote kill switch, which I programmed myself, um, which is used to turn off or turn on the cart from a remote distance. The kill switch is also, is more like a safety device. As we're speaking about safety, here you can see we have our helmet, and safety always comes first. And I like to add that the main purpose of this go-kart is to help persons of the Herbert Marcy Technical High School to learn how to drive so that when they leave high school they can have their driver's license. Mr. Cook? Hi, Ms. Clark. Thank you for having me. This is my man. All right, so we're now at the buzzer system. And Mr. Cook, the president of the engineering club and teacher here, will be telling us more about this. This buzzer circuit here is um, no necessarily special buzzer circuit, um, but it has um, an additional feature. It has a referee here, basically, which basically indicates who buzz first. So if Team Red buzz first, that signal is sent to this circuit board, which turns on the red light. When the red light is turned on, it prevents the blue light to turn on, whether or not the blue team is pressing. So, Ms. Clark, we're going to give you a practical demonstration of how these circuit boards work. Awesome. Team Blue, ready? Yes, sir. Team Red, ready? Yes, sir. Listen for me carefully. What is the capital of St. James? Montego Obviously, Bay. Team Blue is up first. Team Blue? Yes, sir. Montego Bay. Montego Bay, York, and Montego Bay is correct. So we decided that we wanted to, to make a board and make a board that is futuristic and upgrade from what we had before. We also made it on the next basis. As a teacher, I wanted to have students to do activities, creative activities, because there are times when the activities is boring in, in their view. So I wanted students to get a feel of what it's like to be on school challenge quiz in my class without being on school challenge quiz. Have you ever heard about 3D printing, sublimation printing, and laser engraving? If not, today is your lucky day. We have examples of all three that were produced by the Engineering Club, and we'll be joined by Conrad, who will be showing us examples of these. Over to you, Conrad. Okay, thank you. Um, so here, here we have different products and items that were created in the laser engraver. So we have different keychains and necklaces, even little award plaques. These were all done in the laser engraver, which, as its name suggests, uses a laser to chip away at the materials put in, which is usually acrylic or solitex. Here we have medals that were given out at Sports Day. These were put into the heat press, which is a sublimation machine, and it basically transfers the gas to a solid, which is displayed in the center. Here we have one of my favorite things, the edge lamp. Now these edge lamps are both are two parts. So the main part is the acrylic and the second part is the base. Now 
the acrylic is done in the laser engraver, like all our acrylic pieces, and the bases. Some of them are pre-owned, some of them were purchased, while some of them were created by our wonderful 3D printer. Now this 3D printer can do a marvel of things. It can create little keychains and trinkets, it can create full-blown machine parts, and it can even create functioning toys, toy vehicles. What it does is it melts a small wire of filament and through a little spout, takes its time and works its way up printing from, from bottom to top. I'd like to add that these pins and keychains and trinkets that we make, we don't just keep them for ourselves, obviously. We sell, we sell them to the school at a discounted cost and we sell them to other schools and institutions at lower costs. Thanks again, Conrad. So we only have one more interesting project for you, and that's the virtual tour of the Herbert Morrison Technical High School. And our friend here, Anthony, will be taking you through that tour. Today we are showing an interactive simulation of the school. It incorporates different things from different members of the engineering club. Today we have Kobe Jordan, he's our 3D modeler, he designs our characters. What he has here is the principal he's working on, the principal of our school, uh, Mr. Adams. All right. We also have Marcus Cohen, he works on the full model of the school, all the details of the school. He went out and got pictures and measurements of the entire school and then recreated it in a 3D software. Then we have Kevin Lee, our texture. He takes the models and applies realistic looking materials to them to make it look as realistic as possible, having all the scratches and dents of the school. And I do the programming. It allows for the character movements. As you can see, you can walk around the 3D space uh, as much as you want. You'll see the AI, like different students in the school walking around, going about their daily lives. The code allows them to inter move around, move around the 3D space. After I get the models from KJ, our vice president and 3D modeler, you can see the school is to scale. As you can see, when you stand up, you are to scale to the school. So are the characters in the simulation. Here is the document center for school. Down there, the area that we are looking is the visual arts area, and over there is the TD rooms. So you can see it's a fairly accurate model of the school. Boy, it's so sad that we have to close the program for today, but I know you will all agree with me that we had a fulsome time here at Herbert Morrison Technical High School. But just before we close the program, we have a quick question we want to ask the president and founder of the three-year engineering club. Why all of this? I've never seen anything like this. They are cut above the rest. Why? As a teacher of electrical technology, I have seen a lot of talent in my years of teaching. I just think that it is my duty to help bring forth that talent. Thank you so much, Mr. Cook, and all the best. I, I have great expectations for the club. And that's it. To have your school featured in School Zone, simply email me at sclark at gis.gov.jm. I'm looking forward to seeing your email. Until then, take care. If eating healthy is on your things to do list for the new year, and that should be the case, it's important to be aware of the essential nutrients that the body needs to support growth and maintaining good health. Get the information in this feature. Eating healthy by having a balanced diet consisting of items from all the food groups and consuming the right portions is important to get the nutrients vital for disease prevention, growth and good health. Essential nutrients are building blocks for the cells that make up the body, from bone to muscle, skin and hair. One of the most critical ones is protein, which is made up of different amino acids, some of which the body can make on its own. We need a variety of proteins to function properly, many of which can only come from the foods we eat. 
Meats, fish and eggs are essential sources from animals, while plant sources include beans, nuts and some grains. How much protein you need daily depends on a variety of factors, including how active you are and your age. Carbohydrates are the main nutrients for fueling the body's energy needs, especially our central nervous system and brain. They help protect against diseases, but some carbohydrates are healthier than others. Some healthy sources include your fresh produce, such as yam, banana, breadfruit and tubers, as well as whole grains, fiber-rich vegetables and fruits. Less healthy sources include refined grains and products with added sugar. Fats often get a bad rap, but it's important to know that healthy fats are essential to our body's function. Fats aid in vitamin and mineral absorption, blood clotting, building cells and muscle movement. Fats are high in calories, which is a measure of energy from foods, but the World Health Organization recommends keeping daily calorie intake from fat at under 30%. Including healthy fats, which are the unsaturated fats in your diet, can help balance blood sugar, decrease the risk of heart disease and type 2 diabetes, and improve brain function. Healthy fats are also powerful anti-inflammatories and can lower the risk for arthritis, cancer, and Alzheimer's disease. Some of the well-known unsaturated fats are the omega-3 and omega-6 fatty acids. Sources of these healthy fats include fish, seeds, nuts and vegetable oils, olive, avocado and flax seeds. Trans fats are to be avoided and we should also limit our intake of saturated fats, of which the main sources are animal-based and include butter, cheese, red meat and ice cream. Vitamins are organic compounds essential for normal growth and are required in small quantities. There are 13 essential vitamins that the body needs and these help lower the risk of diseases such as lung and prostate cancer. Vitamin A supports healthy vision, skin and bones. Powerful antioxidants like vitamin C boost the immune system and helps the body heal. Eating a varied and well-balanced diet of fruits and vegetables should supply the body with the required vitamins. Minerals are also important nutrients needed for building strong bones and teeth. They help with regulating our body's metabolism and keeping us properly hydrated. The mineral calcium strengthens bones and teeth and helps with nerve signal transmission. It also helps to maintain healthy blood pressure and with muscle contraction and relaxation. Iron supports red blood cells and hormone creation, while the mineral zinc boosts the immune system and wound healing. The body also needs water, which improves brain function and mood, and acts as a shock absorber and lubricant in the body. Water also flushes our toxins, carries nutrients to cells, hydrates the body, and prevents constipation. Even mild dehydration can make us feel tired and impair concentration and physical performance. In addition to drinking water, we can hydrate ourselves by eating fruits and vegetables such as spinach and watermelon. Start treating your body right. As you grab your next meal, make sure you're getting all the nutrients needed in their right proportion. We've come to the end of our half hour journey, but be sure to come back right here tomorrow for another edition of Jamaica Magazine. Until then, continue to watch these and other programs by logging on to our website, jis.gov.jm, or subscribing to our YouTube channel. You may also find us on all the major social media platforms and through our mobile app that's Android and iOS compatible. On behalf of the entire production team, I'm Theodore Henry. What good? This has been a production of the Jamaica Information Service, the voice of Jamaica.